so now this is part two of the video. Yes. So Pico de la Mir uh, um, Mirandola. Yes. He stated that humans neither have a, have a fixed abode nor a form. That is yours alone, nor do humans have a function. In other words, we don't live for any reason. We don't even know why we're alive. So we don't have a fixed body or a form. We can do anything um, uh, um, that defied human or haman, yes, and um, humanist or humanism, you see. That is the definition of, um, that's what transhumanism is, yes. So now the thing is, if anybody wants to um, check check his, uh, who is Giovanni, Giovanni Pico della Mirandola, who was this man, he was an Italian Renaissance um, humanist, philosopher, and scholar. Yes, um, you know, or he was carrying out the policy of Haman. Yes, or Human, or Aman, or Amon. Yes, and so what do you call it? Yes, different humanists have different opinions. Now, what you learn as humanism in school is one thing for the general masses. And then there is the other thing at different levels when you progress in humanism. Yes. And um, um, according to um, officials and politicians and uh, many things. So in many levels of humanism, life is not precious and it is not sacred or God given for a humanism. Therefore, there can be good reasons to, uh, to end it. Like, for example, an abortion. Or, for example, we think these people are a danger to, to um, what do you call it, the United States. Let's go bomb their countries. You understand? So it's up to you. Like, if you're going to say, I'm China, I'm a humanist, and um, America is a danger to us, so let's destroy them. You see? Yes? You see? Yeah. It, humanism is your opinion based on your analysis, what you think you're doing for your good, good, good advancement and for the people who you love. You understand? That's what humanism is. That's what Haman is. Firan, Pharaoh, and Haman, they loved or Amon, the, um, whoever loved them and whoever they love, it was within their, for their agendas. You see, that's what humanism is basically at the end of the day. Yes. And um, the thing is, this is, this is well known now. The thing is, um, many humanists will try to deny it. Oh no, it's a beautiful policy. Yes, it is beautiful when they turn and say, hey, science and um, research bring out the truth. I'll tell you what many humanists say. Um, um, they do respect, um, they don't think all life is sacred, but they do respect life, depending on what they think is good for life. And the thing is, they do turn out and say, you must do research and bring out the truth. Ah, that's humanism, humanists are, are followers of human in general. But what about the human politicians at a higher level? Let's see where the humanism is at the higher level in politics. Yeah, this is where we'll go through Renaissance documents and they defined it. Yes, and um, what do you call it? Yes, for example, um, this is a uh, many humanists believe this, and um, different humanists because you everyone's different, so you you make up your own opinion. So therefore, humanism is like democracy. Everyone's got the right to free street, say what you want, believe anything. Yes, not all life is sacred, and the quality of life is more important than the right to live. The quality. Yes. So if we think that somebody is going to reduce the quality of life in Europe, then we're going to see that that civilization as a th threat, wipe, wipe them off the map. Yeah, which is which is pretty normal. If aliens are invading us and they're a threat, we'll have to we'll think we'll have to destroy them. That's true. That, that up to a certain point. So uh, that's OK. But then the thing is, because the way we, the humanists set up the new world order and the nation states, yeah. So if we're going to destroy another nation state, they set up this world order. Yes. So it's a contradiction in terms. Yes. So now somebody turned and said, how could David quote Napoleon if Napoleon didn't exist? So now I'm going to explain to you something. I'm going to show you in simple terms before we get back onto humanism. Yes. Jesus Christ, archaeological evidence shows Jesus does not exist. So how could I quote Jesus Christ and say, Jesus said, find the truth and the truth shall set you free. It's because what we know is that what people say about Jesus or what these fake um, historians wrote working for the Vatican, who wrote these Greek gospels that were written in Egypt, nothing to do with Greece or Greek. Yes, they wrote the story of a man called Jesus Christ. But the evidence shows in history, no man ever existed according to the way the Gospels have, river, have described Can it. Can you please no resend the last picture because it didn't go through? 
Ah, and no man with the name of Jesus Christ ever existed. Are you sure? The Bible says Jesus was real. What are the proof? Have you not got this? Where it says Jesus does not exist. You, you didn't receive it? Yeah, it's very strange. It just shows black. It's really not. I can see there's an image sent, but I can't. There's nothing on the image. <laughs> very strange. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll send the next image. Have you got this? Yes, this works. Mm -hmm. This one has come through? Yes. Yes? Ah, I don't know why. So um, this thing is. Um, yeah, let but me here also send here it says, again. Uh, outright myth is those that think Jesus did not exist are growing, it says. It's official. We yeah. can now doubt Jesus something. Cambridge University Press. Yeah. Now, have you got the History Channel? Yes, um, what do you call it? The evidence shows that Jesus yes, Christ does now. not exist. Yeah. And uh, there's many videos on this. Now, the thing is, um, so the thing is, if Jesus Christ doesn't exist, yes? And um, what do you call it? No man ever with the name Jesus Christ ever existed. Yeah? There is no evidence that um, people were calling, hey, Mr. Jesus Christ. No man with this name ever existed in history. So how can David quote him? It's because Jesus Christ is actually based on the character of another person. Yes. And um, this is this is in many of my books. And there's more details of the war against the followers of Jesus Christ. Now, if you haven't read my books, then um, I can't go into it in, in detail for you, you know, and repeat it. And um, Fomenko has gone through it as well. More information about this is in my book, Jesus Christ. Um, yes, but what we do know is that there was another man in history and that the story of Jesus Christ was invented, totally invented, and they created a guy called Jesus Christ from a man who was called Esau. Yes, now, uh, now in England, um, the English knew a man called Esau, but now they invented a guy called Jesus Christ. Yeah, the Jesuits were called the Society of Esau. Yes, but now in Italy, they've invented Jesu. Yes, so they've given him a different name. They've totally invented the name. And then they've invented a fake history to say that, um, what do you call it? Oh, his name was Joshua. But even in the Old Testament, if you open up the Bible, it actually turns out says Joshua is not called Joshua. He was called Osia or Esau or Osia or Saw or Esau or Isa, as the Muslims say. So the thing is, um, the thing is, yeah, um, uh, um, people are trying to say he, we're trying to fight against fake history. Yeah. OK, why don't you call him Isa? The Muslims do it. Oh, no. Insist on calling him Jesus Christ. No man called Jesus Christ based on these stories of these Gospels has ever existed. We can't even find this history. Even the timeline doesn't match. I'm going to go more into this in a minute. And um, the thing is, so now somebody will say David said it, um, Jesus didn't exist, but he's going to quote Jesus Christ and say, find the truth and the truth shall set you free. It's because the character of Jesus Christ is based on a man called Isa or Osa or Esau. Yes. And um, that's why I will quote Jesus Christ and say that Jesus didn't exist. It's based on a different character. So now um, that so that's what I will do. Yes. Um, so now another thing, the historical evidence also shows that that this man called Muhammad or who the Muslims call the specifically um, Prophet Muhammad, yes, that he lived in the sixth century, yes, according to some Qurans in the city of Petra or the Rock of Peter or Petra, where there's all these rocks, yes, notice the name and the fraud in it, yes, and that he lived in Arabia and that he, he married a six year old or nine year old girl. This Muhammad that they put in these history books, yes, does not exist. That doesn't mean that I'm saying that um, the Prophet Muhammad didn't exist, the one that's mentioned in the Quran. That is a different Muhammad, you see? So now that is what Fomenko does, yes? Fomenko explains this, yes? Yeah, and um, the thing is, uh, Fomenko explains this and many other people have, have had problems. Does this historical Muhammad, that, the, that um, according to the official history that the Jesuits have put there and the British put the manuscripts, they open the museums throughout the Islamic world, throughout Europe, and they put Muhammad, and they say, and what we can find, even in opendemocracy.net, Arabic coins, inscriptions, and papyri, and other documentary evidence in the language, Muhammad only appears in the 680s. So we can't even find a Muhammad to exist. 
it appears after this man called the prophet Muhammad lived. So now we have a similar problem. Yes, with Moses. Did Moses ever exist? It's because we are looking for the Moses with the English language in the plural with the Greek, Moses, Julius, Augustus. Yes, whereas the Quran calls him Musa and um, the Jews call, call him Moshe. Yes, not Moshesh. Yes, what do you call it? Outside the biblical scripture and things like that, there is no evidence in the archaeological and historical record to show that Moses existed because they fabricated the history. They fabricated the history. So now I can I can say this Moses in the history, yes, that they're showing us does not exist. Yes. And the thing is, um, um, the thing is, um, they can advertise this because they invented the history because they want this to be the truth one day. The humanists are going to say, hey, we're speaking about the evidence. They're on television saying, hey, guys, we can see there's no evidence of this. Yes, we must um, face reality. There is virtually no evidence, as the Torah says, that 600,000 Jewish males with their wives and their children and elders left Egypt. So did the Exodus ever happen? Did this Moses actually exist? We cannot find the evidence. Therefore, this story is a fraud. In other words, they invented the history and then they're saying, oh, we follow humanism. Uh, humanism says, find the truth and all these things. Well, it's exactly the opposite. They put this history there and now they're telling us, hey, we're the nice guys. We're the real humanists. You understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, 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 that's what they're, uh, they're trying to trying to show. So um, let me just. Um, um, so now the thing is, um, because we mentioned um, Petra, let me um, just go through a few things. Now in um, throughout Jordan, there's all these so-called historical sites now, ancient sites. Here's an example of one of them. Now, if you haven't read my book, Ancient Greece Didn't Exist, you won't be able to see this that um, remains of mining, that they've just transformed them into archaeological sites. And we can't find no evidence of these places um, to be very old either. So now Petra. Now Petra is is um, the thing that Sam Garans is claiming, um, what do you call it? Yes, he's claiming that this place is where the Prophet Muhammad actually lived. Now let's look at um, Sam Garans. He's even made a video on this. Yes. Yeah, he's even made a video on this, and um, many people say that uh, uh, him and many of the Quranists um, speak about this. And he's turning around. He is saying that Muhammad came from, or was connected with Petra. Now, this is what he says in the video. So now he's saying he's connected with. But let's go through a bit more about Sam Garanz. Garanz. Um, Some people say his ex exact word. Let's open up Sam Garanz's website quranis.com or what's it called yes sam Duran's website have you received it yeah it's called quranite.com what do you see there on the left hand side is the logo of his website yes what does the logo of sam Duran's website quranite.com look like oh i didn't even notice at first yeah i mean i saw the symbol but yeah mm -hmm. well um, he's he's put that symbol there it's his website his Quranite.com. What can you see? Yeah, I mean, you made it clear on the right hand side. It's a, it's a 19. What do you see? <laughs> it's a 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Now you know who, what he represents, who he represents, and what's going on. Yes. So now let's let's go through some Garanzi's Jaran's, um, his own words, and what does his own words say? Since I connect Muslim Muhammad with the I connect. He connects Muhammad with the city of Petra, that it is the location of the pilgrimage. Now he's trying to say the Muslims didn't go to Mecca and the Muslims went to <laughs> went to Petra to do Hajj. Let me just show you what the Muslims do in Mecca. They do a pilgrimage there. And what is this um, Mecca place or pilgrimage? Let me just send you a photograph because now he's trying to say the Muslims did it in Petra, in um, these caves and mountains and this other thing so um let me just bring it up so the muslims um yeah they're going over here but sam jaran's garand is officially said that the muslims yes it was the location of the pilgrimage and muhammad prophet muhammad and his men all of them the boys you name it they hung around petra or they hung around peter 
Yes, but um, the Muslims do Hajj there today, basically saying, you're all doing it wrong. You're going to the wrong place, guys. Yeah, this was the real place. <laughs> yeah, and um, don't forget, Sam Garand, um, yeah, let's just leave this on for another minute while I'm finding the page, yeah? You know, Sam Garand's website, don't forget, guys. Yeah, this is what he represents, and um, it's clear. It, it, um, the thing is, he chose it, and only an idiot will not be able to see through that. So today I'm going to go through Petra a bit more clearly. Yes, there's different types of mining in different types of hills and caves all over the world because there's different types of minerals we're looking for. So what, what we can do, we can break a mountain or go into a place and, and um, what do you call it? Imagine we took out 100, 100 stones, only 10 stones will have, let's say iron or tin or copper, or zinc, or aluminium, or gold, or silver, and 90% of the rocks are useless. Now, here is a set of rocks in England. Now, all I have to do is decorate these rocks on the outside, at the mining site, and say, hey, I found um, ancient, ancient, ancient Greece. Yeah, this is in Wales, in England, in the yeah. United Kingdom. I've just, yes. Yeah. So now let's let's um, have a look at this place a bit more. Yes. So the thing is, um, the thing is, there's many of these historical sites that they've converted. Now I'm going to show you that's a mining site in England. So now Petra is next door to Israel. You know, Israel and Jordan are just across the border. You can walk across. Yeah. If they let you, that is, you know, if the Jordanians let you or if the Arabs let you or the Israelis or people. So now here is, a, here is a, an Israeli park. Yes. And what do you call it? Yes. What are these places? Copper mines? Or what are they going to say now? Oh, these aren't copper mines. This is where Buddha and his followers lived in these caves and they did pilgrimages mm. here. Look through the look at the tunnels. You see all of these tunnels and everything. They're holes that the people made for the copper mining caves. Yes. Oh no no no! In Petra, the holes in the caves. Oh, that's where the followers of the Prophet Muhammad were hiding out. They were fighting. There was a resistance. There was wars and battles going on. Yeah, sure. They gave birth to babies here. There's no. There's no vegetation there. We don't know how they survived. They must have been nomads or whatever, just hanging around in these caves. But God told them to do the pilgrimage here. Yes, Mr. Sam Garans Jurans. Yes, and Dan Gibson and the rest of them. Yes, yeah, uh, and and um, these Quranis. So let's go through a few more of these caves. So all you've got to do is just polish these caves and make them a bit more square and whatever. Get ready for the tourists today. Don't you know they were houses? Yeah, it was just the miners and other people just staying there. That's all, guys. Yeah, or if a disaster happened for the Bedouin, sometimes to sleep over at night. Yeah. Uh, or something because the Bedouins came, you know, a, a lot more came after the Balkan Wars. People retreated to the Middle East because they didn't have homes until they went to live in cities. We find many of these mining caves all over the world. Yes. And all you've got to do is just modify them. And here, for example, yeah, here is um, um, a mining place that um, you actually have to build installations in many of these mining sites. That, um, have a look at it, yes, around, around the caves. Now, the thing is, if you've not read my book, Ancient Egypt Didn't Exist, then um, you won't be able to see this. But um, in Ancient Egypt Didn't Exist, I go through, I go through sites um, um, in Luxor to show um, the fraud where they've converted a mining site, yes, into an ancient Egyptian site. I'll, I'll quickly just um, find this now from the book and show it so that people can see it um, the, um, the, that there's a mining site and then the remains of the mining place they just converted it into a temple yes um there was um let's see if i can find it what page uh, yeah and um <clears throat> here um i'm going to send it um uh, this place where is this place ah yes um this is 
Queen Hatshepsut's temple. And um, the, um, they said they found lots of ancient things around here that um, tourists go there and think, wow, there's these mega statues here. These ancient Egyptians must have been so grand, great. Look, look, this, this must be real history, thousands of years, guys. Yeah, and everything. And then they tell you we restored the temple from an original and it's it's same like Petra. So the thing is, um, let me just show you. These are what the statues are outside. Yes, so now um, from far away, what you can see is that there is a temple there. Let me just show you. And you'll see the hills around it. It was just a mining site that, um, have a look at the, have a look at these hills. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yes, can you see it? Yes, now I want you to compare. Yes, mining sites that you have to build things. Yes, that if there's a lot of materials there and you have to take them out. So now here is a mining site and this is an abandoned mining site, by the way. Yes, in Nevada. This is a, an abandoned mining site. What is the difference? All I've got to do now in Nevada is um, I have to, all I have to do is convert it and say, the ancient, ancient Egyptians were here, guys. Oh, no, no, no. This is an ancient Aztec temple. That's all I got to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now the thing is, let's look at the same place a hundred years ago in Egypt. Yes. And what you will see, um, what you call it, there's remains of buildings there. Yes. From mining that you will actually find the remains there and all they did was modified it. There was no temple there whatsoever in the first place uh, more than a hundred years ago. There's many pictures you could find them online. Queen Hatshepsut, they even invented the name. I can't even imagine it, what its name is. Queen Hatshepsut, that anybody who knows that, that you will see, let me just show you her name. Yes, that you will see it's just a modification of the name Sheba because they'll say she had her ships, everything. So then they will say, hey, um, the Jews, they fabricated the story of the Queen of Sheba and Solomon. It's a lie. They invented this so that people will doubt that Old Testament story. And the story is in the Quran also. Yes. And the thing is, a lot of the Old Testament story, they played with that, unfortunately. Yes, but the Old Testament is very important because it's got a lot of history. But because um, the Pope and the boys... Um, they played with it when it, um, when they claimed they translated it from the Hebrew original. Yes, um, you know, 1,000, um, uh, um, 2,000 years ago. Let's look at a few more of these mining sites and we're going to compare them to Petra. Yes, um, where is this one here? This one is a, a salt mine um, in Cooper Petty in Australia. Ah, I like this one. Do you know what? This has already been converted. Yes. Because the thing is, you know, um, um, you know, mining companies and other places that are going to lose money. So many of these places, they've converted them to homes and everything else. And um, there's many things going on. Can you see the, um, the pictures enlarged mm -hmm. there of the, um, the homes? So they've done this. So now um, let, let's go through South Dakota in the United States. There's many of these places and whatever. And you'll see it that inside the walls are the same and everything. Just got to put a bit of hieroglyphics on or a bit of Greek things on or something like say ancient Mayan, ancient Chinese. They've got similar sites. They've already made Buddha sites out of some of these mining, mining hole, big caves and everything, big openings. That um, Let me just show you how um, 19th century mining, people don't know, um, have not checked. Mining 100 years ago was pretty advanced. Yes. Um, or how did we build these cities? The thing is big holes, everything. Have you got the mining pictures there? You'll find hundreds mm -hmm. of pictures of the minings, yes? And all you got to do is that you can reach up to the roof and you just redecorate it. And that's what they did. Before they went, they opened these holes. People can go back to the other pictures, reverse them and have a look and you'll see that they just went and decorated it and polished it out. There you go, there is Petra. Oh, no, 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 this is not Petra. The Prophet Muhammad, he live here. This is the Sam Jarans and Sam Garans. Yes, 19. Yes. And then the thing is, of course, you're going to have a few things that say there were churches here, there were mosques here, there was this, that here, everything. We just found it. And so, what you're going to do is you're going to be building, um, yeah, yeah, because it's a business, so many people are coming to make it realistic. Yeah, you'll make a, a few things a bit nicer than the other things. But anybody else who's been there will say, hey, it's just, um, what do you call it, mining from there. You see? 
Yes. You can you you can see it. So so now let's um 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 go back to um what do you call it? Yes, a bit about um Christianity. Yes, and um what we will see to connect all the dots. Well, anyway, the last point about Petra, Petra, Peter, and um what do you call it? Sam Garans and the Quran is Quranite or whatever. It's a scam. His website you can even see the 19. You don't have to be intelligent or something. He chose it. He put it there. God knows who he works for. Who cares? <laughs> you know, um, you believe it if you want it. Yes, it's just an invented history. Well, anyway, the thing is, um, what people will notice is that there's iconography, iconography of Christianity and the Egyptian goddess Isis, Horus, and the Virgin Mary. It's actually similar to Egypt. This is very uh, um, important. Yes, and the word Horus becomes Hor or Hor or Horistos. Yes, so they invented the name Horist or Horus, Christ. Yes, or Christos. In many European languages, they say, still say Horistos, Horus, Horistos. Yes, and then um, what, the thing is, many people are going, going to quote the parallels. Yeah, many people will say, hey, there's many similarities between Mitraism and Christianity. And between Zoroastrianism, there's comments there. Zoroaster, they prayed this many times a day. So did the Muslims. Who said this history is true anyway? Did they, what if they invented Zoroaster and Mitra or, or um, uh, um, invented the timeline and everything? Yes. And anyway, the, um, so people will say David quotes Napoleon Bonaparte. I'm quoting that Napoleon Bonaparte was based on other characters. I will explain this to you so that people will understand Fomenko's research at last, because many people have no idea what he's saying, because they're going to say, Fomenko said this guy doesn't exist, but then he quotes him. So anyway, back to Greek mythology. Yes, um, what do you call it? Apollo. Yes, it's similar to um, Napoleon. So who existed first, Napoleon or Apollo? Or were both these stories invented? Yes, the similarities, many people will turn around and say, he was born here, this, that, everything. You can open these uh, uh, web pages. The sun myth, you know, rises in the east and sets in the west. So now what Professor Fomenko does. Now, people don't understand Fomenko's research. So today I'm going to finally explain it in, in a short few minutes. So what does Fomenko do? Yes, what do you call it? Yes, Fomenko points out that what do you call it? History is a joke that biographies or when you go through Wikipedia and it says this is the story of um, Napoleon Bonaparte, this is the story of, um, what do you call it, this um, King William the Conqueror, this is the story of um, Ivan the Terrible, Ivan Grozny of Russia, this is the story of um, G Jesus Christ. All these biographies, yes, were invented from original real people and <laughs> they mixed it together with imaginary personalities. That's what they did during the Renaissance. Do you see what Fomenko mm -hmm. is showing? Mm -hmm. He says that Jesus Christ existed. And then he turns around and points out that Jesus Christ, yes, will be. Now, many people don't ex understand what Fomenko said. That it, many people say, hey, Fomenko is saying, Fomenko is saying Andronicus is Jesus Christ. Yes, um, um, from the, um, what do you call it? Yes, from the list of kings, yes of the Roman Empire, yeah, or the Eastern Roman Empire known as um, 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 Byzantium, yes. So when people see this, yes, um, people don't understand what he means, because what he turned around and says, it's because there's translations of his work, so they will say reflection, it means a copy. What they've done is invented the history of Andronicus in the Byzantium Empire, because Fomenko shows that the entire history of Byzantium is a fake and the Roman Empire is a fake. So what he shows is that Andronicus, yes, it, it has actually got a similar story to the Jesus Christ of the New Testaments. Yes, and he shows it's a copy, reflection, mirror. So he's basically saying copy, but they've translated it as reflection. So what he shows is that a real guy did exist. And what they did was invented imaginary people, copied the stories from here to there and everywhere. That is what Fomenko shows. Yes, and um, what do you call it? So that's what I mean when I say Napoleon didn't exist and it was based on another 
real character and other imaginary characters, and they mix together other real characters. I will I will show you how Fomenko does. I'm not going to use hard words like um, what do you call it? Yes. Fomenko makes the hypotheses and then the evidence um, stipulates. I'm not going to use hard words. I always use easy words so that people will understand things um, very clearly. Yeah, I'm not going to use uh, any of these hard words or anything. Yes. So Fomenko shows what they did is um, saying, hey, we got a, um, what do you call it, Donald Trump here. Let's mix a bit of, um, you know, stories of Donald Trump and Angela Merkel. Or somebody said David likes Angela Merkel. No, I said, I like her acting. That's all. Somebody, they're an actor. I like their acting. Same like I like the acting of Jim Carrey. So people take it out of the, um, um, if they don't understand me, I'm sorry, even with Obama, I said, I like his acting. It doesn't mean I like Obama or the administration or anything political. So now the thing is, many people who've studied the cults of Mithras or Zoroaster or Zoroastrianism or anything, they found that it doesn't exist, yes, in the so-called timeline or, and many things have been invented, but actually there was something else. Zoroaster and Ezra or Uzair in the in um, Egypt or Osiris or Uzair Osiris yes and um, that was there and if you um, to understand that more it will take too long to explain um, that story there I've gone into it in detail in my book The Matrix Codes yeah if you haven't read it uh, I, um, I can't do anything yes and um, the thing is so um the thing is um, many things have been invented and falsified, yes, and um, the thing is, and they're based on some truth, yes, so now let's go through what Fomenko, what Fomenko explains about history. Now, many people, they can read Fomenko's books for hours, they can read everything, but they won't understand if you don't understand what Fomenko is showing. So what do you call it, yes? So Fomenko shows they invented the history of every person, like even Farnese, Farnese's family, of Machiavelli's. They invented the history of Lorenzo and everybody else in, it, in Italy, all the history of the Italiano and the Renaissance and the scholars, everything is invented, history. So Fomenko shows that, that they, all of this is just a forgery. And so what they did was, <laughs> these people they sat down in the 16th century i like it man they just invented ancient history what they copied is the same story solomon and sheba so they invented the story of hatshepsut yes and her ships and her training queen hatshepsut and the boats they invented julius caesar and cleopatra yes solomon and sheba the same story again and again yes so um the um solomon and sheba um what do you call it? Shah Jahan and his love, the sweet love. He built the Taj Mahal for it. Oh, uh, um, what do you call uh, What do you call it? Um, um, the Emperor Solomon of the Ottoman Empire. And um, what do you call it? His love with that woman. I forgot her name. Yes. But anyway, so what they did was they invented these characters. And then they said, don't you know, we lost ancient Greece 2000 years ago. We lost ancient Hebrew 2000 years ago. We lost ancient Rome. <laughs> years ago or 1000 years ago ancient arabic we lost it a thousand years ago it's been missing but we've just refound it now we've rediscovered it that's why it's called the rebirth of the renaissance renaissance um so naissance s'il vous plaît that the naissance en français yes you see mm -hmm. yes so um the thing is um what do you call it yes and then fomenko for, um i'm not sure if fomenko points this out i've forgotten um, the thing is, but he showed the, um, some invention of languages, but I go into it deeper in my books. If you haven't read my books, once again, I'm sorry, but I show clear examples of them inventing these <laughs> modern languages. Yes, for this purpose, 16th and 17th new rulers called on special people, Jesuits, Masons and everybody else, and they were instructed to invent new languages for all the world. Yes. And um, um, the, so they put these borders there, yeah? And what do you call it? Yes, so what happened? Yes, after the Bible was invented and still being completed, the Old Testament, so what they had to do is invent imaginary characters. Yes, they invented Babylon because they wanted to hide that Babel is Egypt or people will investigate Egypt more. Or in the Quran, it says, hey, Babel, it says Firaun. The name is clear, it says Haman, humanism. And then everybody is going to turn on things there. So what they turn on did, they sent Haman 
And they said, no, 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 he was from Babylon in the times of Esther. Yes. So in the Old Testament, they modified it. So now you've got to prove it. So what did they do? Yes, Fomenko points out. And um, this is in my book, Ancient Egypt Didn't Exist. If you haven't read it, I can't do anything. Or if you haven't read Fomenko's books, they just built these monuments and turned out and said, hey, we just found it in the 19th century or in the 1940s, 1930s, 50s. So what do you call it? They invented this proof for religious history. Yes, it's called pious fraud. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, they, they just invented these sites, built them and everything else. So now Ramesses, his body, all this doesn't make sense. Yes, even, even the carbon dating can't even prove it. Yes, and it um, 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 doesn't prove anything. They say Ramesses has been buried for 3,000 years. Yes, yeah, mummified 3,000 years ago. Even the salt and everything, it just doesn't make sense. Yes. So, so, um, the, so um, the thing is now, and um, the thing is many people, even the Bible, has it been extended or something else? So now let's have a look at the Bible. The Bible mentions um, this story here. Yes, it is the story of, um, let me um, just open it up so that I can read it myself. I've sent it to you. It's about, um, it's, it's an, um, in the Old Testament. Um, and it mentions the story in Hosea, yes, after Moses. And it says that, that in Samaria, they've just made a calf as an idol. Eh? And it's saying it's the calf of, um, of um, Samaria. So now this is um, a long time after Moses, yes? And it says um, they have gone up to Assyria like a wild donkey wandering alone. Ephraim, the children of Israel, have sold herself to lovers. Now, somebody is going to turn around and think, hey, that's the story of Moses and the golden calf. Isn't that what you will think immediately? Yes? I guess uh, I'm really not a scholar in this, but yeah. <laughs> I know. I just know yes. there's stories about the calf and so on in the Bible somewhere. But yes. I really so what they did even in the, yes, what they did even in the Bible, the Bible repeats the same story. So now the thing is, the, um, the Quran turned around and says, what do you call it? A different story. The Quran says the calf and um, Samaria or Samiri is actually something else, the name of a person. And it, it, it gives a totally different history that it removes these many, many years of fabricated history that have been added on to make um, history look so long, like hundreds of years, thousands of years, repeats and whatever. So now the thing is scholars of Islam, yeah, scholars, who are these scholars, have linked Samaria some uh, um, the Quran says that um, the man who made the golden calf at the time of Moses was actually Samiri. Yes. And um, what do you call it? Yes. Many people typically translate it as Samaritan. There is no evidence for this. The word could have multiple meanings like um, what do you call it? Mr. English. There's a movie called Johnny English. His name is Mr. English. That doesn't mean that um, what do you call it? He, uh, he represents the English. That doesn't mean, um, what do you call it, English is not a group of people also. So the thing is, many people, um, um, you know, modern historians or modern scholars, Muslims or non-Muslims, that's what, um, you know, many of them say. So now the thing is, um, according to the Bible, it, um, the thing is, you know, of course, they invented the pronunciation of modern Hebrew. Yes. Now, if you haven't read my book, um, what do you call it, Jerusalem is in Europe, then you're going to turn and think, what's he talking about? They invented the Hebrew language. Yeah, recently, only in the last hundred years, and nobody could basically properly speak it until the 1950s, 60s, or 1970s. Yeah, I've, I've gone through this history and the invention of the Hebrew language. Yes, um, they started after the 1880s. Yes, in my book, Jerusalem in Europe. If you've not read it, I can't help you. Please don't comment with an invented comment. This is actually an official history. Yes. So now the Bible turns around and says that Moses gave orders to kill all the idolaters. But Zimri, or Simri, yes, was the son of the Israelite Prince Salu. There's no evidence of this, of who he actually was. He, he was an enemy of Moses and he was defying Moses. Now, the Quran turned around and says um, the man who made the calf or who was the enemy of Moses was actually Samiri. Yes, but the Bible turned around and says, but now um, many of these scholars turn around and say, uh, Samiri means Samaritan and the Muslims are confused and they're copying the story of the Samiri or the Samaritan um, 
that's in the book of Hosea that happened many, many years later. You see? So what they've done is that they've extended the history and they've repeated and duplicated the story, invented characters and locations. Do you see what I'm getting at? That's right. what they've done with the story of now in the Bible, it turned around, in the Quran, it turned around says that I'm, um, what do you call it, Haman was, what do you call it, was the chief policymaker of um, Pharaoh, or one of the chief policymakers. But the Bible turned around and says that what you call it, Haman, happened um, many, many years later, decades, centuries later, God knows when, all these repeat stories that what you call it, Haman was out to kill the children of Israel and everything, things like that. Yes? And uh, it turned around and says, what do you call it? He was the court official and the villain, yeah, in Persia. Yes, yeah, Persia, Pharaoh, Far, Far, you see, or in the land of Farsha. Yes, so many of these things, when somebody goes through it, it, it turns around, it looks like um, invented stories, repeat stories. Yes, so um, the thing is um, uh, Esther. Yeah, and the name Esther, you know, star, whatever. So um, the thing is, um, you know, it's it's just a repeat story again. And um, the thing is, um, we'll go to the Bible in a minute and um, the language. So the thing is, the Quran reduces these many, many centuries because the Quran turns around says Samiri, yes, and Haman and Pharaoh or what is known uh, uh, as, um, what do you call it, the civilization of Far or Pharaoh or Faran or Fars or Haman or Human and or Samiri, Zamiri, this civilization and this happened during the lifetime of Moses. That's what the Quran does. Now, Fomenko also shows that this um, timeline has been extended. Oh, somebody's going to say that, um, what do you call it, I just used... Um, the Quran to prove Fomenko, but um, somebody else commented and said he's using history to prove the Quran. No, the history is already there. This is not about the Quran. This is to show what the war is, humanism, Moses, Islam, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, the Vatican and the New World Order to show that these things didn't happen thousands of years ago. This is recent history and this is continuing today. Then you will understand what's going on in the world today. Now let's go back to Sudan. Yes, and, the, and there is a man, I've spoken about him before, don't know who he works for, but he was supposed to be a Muslim and he's supposed to be famous and he made a lot of money back in the days, um, but now he's an, an ex-Muslim and he, he now goes through the Egyptian version of the Quran, um, around 100 million people are supposed to be using that, and the um, Central African version of the Quran called Duri, yes, that's um, used in... Um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, Central Africa, Sudan. I'm just I'm just going to say Sudan. So he holds them both there and he shows that. Um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, what do you call it? They they have um, they even have a different ver verse numbering system. Yes. That the verse numbers are different, etc. Same like the um, Tunisian Quran, same like the Egyptian one, that they're actually different. Then he actually opens up the books and he goes goes to goes through them and he he quotes several examples and he's correct yes he's correct that the manuscripts have differences so now the thing is when you look at the manuscripts here he points there and it shows that um what do you call it that there's differences but um the subtitles don't show it properly it's because the thing is um you know it didn't pick up he's quoting the arabic letters yeah, that's one example. If any Muslims are there, you can see it. Hey, it's different. Yes, even even the accent sounds, diacritics, different spellings, different. Here's more. I'm sending more. So this man, he's not lying here. Yes, but the thing is, the story that he says, I found him that he's telling lies in other things. Yes, based on the translations. I've actually caught him. I've mentioned this in a video with Raphael. So this man does seem to lie in some instances. But anyway, yes, um, now I'm going to show a clear example of the problems um, in these Quran manuscripts, not in the Quran. Notice the difference. I'm going to explain that in a minute. So these Quran manuscripts, the Sudanese one, notice Sudan had no books, no nothing. And now they mysteriously got these Quran manuscripts. The British opened these libraries. They put these Arabic books there. And now it's suddenly called ancient history of, or hundreds of years of history of Sudan. 
Who do you think put these manuscripts there, um, Raphael? Well, that's the usual suspects. Yes, the same people that who put these Quran manuscripts all over the world and biblical manuscripts. So now I've just sent this one here and it says the word boon. Can you see it? It's because um, the, um, the subtitles couldn't pick it up. It shows that the letter N for the plural and everything and um, um, the differences in the Qurans. Yes, so it's, he is pointing this out. And this letter N, the plurality and the singularity and everything, everything else. So he's pointing it out. So the N could also be because of pronunciation. We mentioned this before. Yes, it's not necessarily plural, but these people put it there because the people who are reciting the Quran, yes, um, 50 years ago, now in the next 10, 20 years, they're going to be using these manuscripts. When Sudan becomes middle class and a bit more wealthier. Yes, yeah, Sudan is a lot more poorer. Let me just show many of these, um, what do you call it, um, differences and mistakes between these manuscripts. I'm just sending them. There's many. Yes, in case Muslims try to deny it. Yes, he shows that, um, what do you call it, there's variance in the accents, pronunciations, in the spellings and everything. Yeah, he shows them. There's um, many of them. So the thing is, he's not inventing them. They're actually there. Now, the thing is, uh, now, the thing is, if you actually look at it, it changes the meanings of the words. It's not a small matter. The manuscripts does this. But who said the Quran is, an, is a manuscript book and who put these manuscripts there? If anybody has watched the previous videos, uh, um, they will notice that these manuscripts were put there by the Europeans, like the previous video goes to who put these manuscripts in Quran. Yes, um, as you can see. Yes. So um, the previous video explains the letter N and how it's been been fabricated. So now when we go through it, yes, uh, um, I mentioned this in the previous video and the one before that. I'm going to <clears throat> just um, do a quick reminder and show um, differences in the Hafs Quran and the Warsh Quran. This is the Tunisian Quran, 100 million people in that region, and the other one um, in um, Cairo. Now in this one it says, if you should save us if he should save us who is you and who is he or is this referring to god and they insert inserted the you and the he with the different accents and everything and they put different letters and they played around this is in the manuscripts that the europeans put now if you haven't listened to, to the previous videos don't bother even commenting and saying hey what do you mean the europeans put it the entire education system the invention of the of the a, a modern classical Arabic language and the full fake history and the invention of the fake classical Arabic so that they could write the historical manuscripts of, of the Arab civilizations. None of it is true. It's all a joke. Now here it turns out says his book and his books. Now the moment you add the accents or change the dots or add a letter or two, it changes everything. Now the thing is, none of these are actually clearly present in the pronunciation. Now the, now the Europeans prepare, prepared even further. They put these manuscripts there and, and um, people discovered them in the last, um, what do you call it, um, uh, discovered them in their libraries a hundred years ago or uh, things like this. But now in the last 20 years, people are finding this and they're going to find more of these things in the next 50 years. The British planted these a hundred years ago, so did the French in the Vatican. Now I've just sent you four pages. Now, when you open the four page, this is the alleged Quran manuscript in Yemen. And the words are different and the meanings are different and um, things like this. In one, it says ransom. In one, it says charity. There's extra words and extra sentences, things like this. That's on the first page. On the second page, <clears throat> it's like a totally different verse. Yes. Um, it's a totally different verse and everything, comparing it to the Egyptian standard Quran. This compares it. So fear them. And uh, here it says, so do not fear the people, but fear me. Here it says, do not fear them who submitted, etc. It's totally different. It's because now they're going on to the next stage. Yes, to show people that this information that I'm showing you now is going to become widespread in the next 20, 30 years. And it's going to cause chaos. Yes. You see, and have you seen the four pages? There's mm -hmm. many instances. Yes, so they prepared pre um, prepared this. Yes, like um, for example, um, between the difference of these and other Qurans, what you will see 
is that um, here it says this, that um, the thing is when you modify a word or something, it says, what do you call it? Yes, wipe your heads and wash your feet. Here it says, wipe your heads and your feet. But the other one says, wash your feet. Because just by changing a little one or two letters or two letters, it totally changes everything. So now let's have a look at, what do you call it? We went through Ramesses. So Ramesses died at an old age. So that means if the Quran says the Pharaoh survived, yes. And then um, what do you call it? Yes, he made the, um, uh, God saved him after he prayed with his body, not in your body. This is what the standard Arabic says. Yes, we went through Ramesses. Now the suspicious, in another suspicious thing is now many Muslims, Muslims are openly claiming, yes, uh, um, a large percentage of their mosques and institutions are distributing material from from a French professor known as a doctor. Many people call him a professor, um, even if he's not. Or, and his name is Dr. Maurice Bukel. And what they tell us about him, even though we cannot verify when he was born, because there were no proper birth certificates at the time, they say he was born on the 19th of July, 1920. Yes, and um, what do you call it? He was the scientist um, in charge of studying um, Pharaoh Merimptah or Ramses. In this video, it says Ramses, but I thought he studied Merimptah's body. But anyway, let's go through this guy here. <clears throat> yes, and um, what do you call it? Yes, um, many people are talking about um, what do you call it? The Quran and Islamic science. Yes, Quran and Islamic science. Now, this is a very big topic yes so now to understand dr maurice bukail and the so-called science in the quran we must go back to the middle ages the renaissance and pharaoh just to make things clear so um now let's um have a look at um, um the muslims were in spain they say that was one of the major centers muslims or jews and um the name in the quran and in the bible is actually haman um, Haman is the chief minister of Persia or the chief minister of Pharaoh. Yes. Now, when we look at this in the Latin languages like Spanish, which is the biggest Latin language, it is Aman or Amen Ra. Amen Ra, ancient Egypt, Amen. Yes. Um, and they say Amen was one of the gods. So now when we have a look at the Bible itself, yes, what do we find? Um, what the Bible says. Now, the Bible says Haman, um, what do you call it? It's um, often written, parfois écrit Haman. Oui. Um, and they say it is in the book of Esther, which is um, m m many years after. So what Fomenko shows is that they repeat history and they just um, duplicate events and just falsify it, adding imaginary characters that don't exist you know, just um, a bogus history. So that's what they've done in the Bible. They've extended the history. Now, what now the, what makes the Quran different is that the Quran actually has the history, but it doesn't have the extra, um, like, in, in thousands of years and the repeats in history and the similar characters appearing again and again and again. Yes, same like we saw Firaun or Pharaoh or en français, Firaun yeah, um, in French. And um, the thing is, um, you know, Far Faron, Farnese family, you know, just like a repeat. And they've falsified the history using false names. So in the Bible, Haman is actually Aman or Amun Ra from Egypt. Yes, and um, we can see it here again. Um, Haman is in the book of Esther. Yes. So as we can see, that is what it is according to Christianity today and according to Judaism. But according to Islam, what we see here is that Haman is the name of, of the minister of Pharaoh at the time of Moses. Yes, living in the same generation. So now when we look at um, what they teach us, what they teach us about ancient Egypt is that um, the, they claim there was a god or a lord or, or um, a master or the king of gods known as Amun, Amon, Aman, uh, whatever. So they go on and sometimes they call him Amun-Ra, combining two different gods. Now, the thing is, let's go to Wikipedia and we'll see how, how it's actually spelled or pronounced. People have different um, pronunciations, so it's, it's spelled Amun, Amon, Aman or Haman or Hamon. 
yes. So um, they um, they say um, it's a God's name, whatever. They just go on to confuse people. But anyway, it's the same thing. And then um, once we look a bit deeper into ancient Egypt, we can actually see that Aman or Haman, um, the story started off actually from, you know, humans. Yes, or a priesthood. Yes. Um, and they, they understood what um, what was Aman's policy or oracle. Or, uh, and um, this is based on um, the international humanism of Egypt. This is the time when people followed Haman or Aman. This is the time when humanism was at its biggest in Egypt. And Moses was fighting against um, Amon and Pharaoh, Haman and Pharaoh in the Quran. Yes. So um, we can see he's fighting against this system of human or humanism. Yes. And he's fighting the Pharaoh. Have you read it? Uh, can you read it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, the international humanism. So ancient Egypt was a humanist society for certain peoples. Yes. And then they've invented the history of Akhenaten. Yes. Akhenaten. Yeah. And um, we can actually see the name has the name Khan or Cohen at the beginning or king of Aten. Aten means Adan or Adonai. Yeah, Khan Adonai. Yes, and then the thing is, if anybody knows Hebrew or Arabic, yeah, some people will say Baruch Atah Adonai. Um, you know, it, it, or, or you know, Adonai instead of um, God. Yes, um, the thing is, but if anybody knows any of these Middle Eastern or Semitic languages, or even in European languages, um, Athens is named after Aton, Aten, Adon, and um, the thing is, it comes from the Garden of Eden or in modern Arabic, dun ya. Yes. So when people say, um, you know, Baruch Atah Adonai, they don't realize they're actually saying the word Lord of the world, not of heaven or, or just the world. Yes. Uh, blessed are, are you the world. So now um, the thing is, you can read about it and um, um, anybody who, who reads um, the hieroglyphics, um, of course, they've falsified a lot, added and deleted things. But um, we will see that um, the mat or the emet or the essence, the reality of emet or, or, or maha emet or maths or mahamat or mahamed or mahamid, yes, um, the essence of math yeah, in the human sphere it goes on and they talk about it that um there was a conflict going on um between the mat and um um uh, uh, and haman and amon ra or things like this and then um once you um explore ancient egypt it wasn't ancient but it was in the middle ages yeah um what do you call it yes um we can see here that um what do you call it? Yes, um, the system of ancient Egypt did not depend on one's merits in the eyes of the Pharaoh, but um, in the lights of one's mind and consciousness. It was a type of religious humanism, like we call it secular humanism. Yes, and um, it, um, they turn around and they call it magic. But um, the thing is, this was their science. Yes, it's not exactly magic. If anybody reads my books, then they will realize that um, they're applying science and lies. So when somebody says magic, it's not exactly magic uh, to a total sense, but it's to do with a lot of lies. So the system was full of lies. Yes. Um, so the thing is um, humanism. Yes. Humanism has got a lot to do with gender ide identity. Yes. And um, the thing is, humanists today are committed for, um, you know, um, this um, gender agenda. Ad the agenda for, um, you know, your identity, sexual orientation, and the humanists um, today are committed to um, explore um, these things. Yes. Yes. So um, the, the thing is, um, uh, um, Moses was the opposite of humanism. So um, humanism um, uh, um, replaces God with man. Um, in other words, you are God. Yes, humanism, we all are gods. The, the world is God. Everything around you is God. Um, and the thing is, this is why Christianity says God created man in God's image. In other words, you are God. Basically, it's another way of saying it. And um, even in many aspects of Hinduism, Buddhism, you know, God is everywhere, God is inside everything. Whereas in Judaism, modern Judaism, yes, and in in Islam itself, um, the thing is they say that God is outside the universe. Um, there are some people within 
Islam and within uh, Judaism who um, have their own uh, own um, groups and own things with this. But um, basically, those two religions, in simplest terms, say that God is outside the universe and that we are not God. So they are in conflict with humanism. It's the exact opposite. Yes. So now um, here, when we see this, um, this is what the Quran actually says. Now, the Quran says that, um, what do you call it, when Pharaoh um, um, spoke to uh, um, uh, uh, um, spoke to Haman, he turned around and said, build me a big tower. Yes, so, uh, to one of his ministers, Haman or Haman or whatever. Yes. And he turned around and said, I do not know any other God other than myself. That is humanism, whereby you believe that you yourself are God. Yes. And um, let me just show you that this is um, people learn this in philosophy. You learn this in school. Nothing new. Humanism, for there is no God. The self must be worshipped in God's place. Yes, humanism defies nearly everything um, and they don't accept God. Basically, you are God. Yes. And um, the thing is, um, um, this is where evolution came in, you know, um, survival of the fittest or the strongest God. Yes. And um, that's how we know that in the Bible, um, they must have played around with it because the Bible approves this. It says humanism. God created us all in his image. Therefore, we are all gods. Yes. And um, let's go even further. Um, um, let me just show this multiple websites in case people think I'm making it up. Yes. Um, you know, um, what do you call it? Humanism teaches that you are God. Yes. They're, basically, they don't say it openly, but basically you are God. Yeah. Um, here is another example. Um, these humanistic religions. Yes. Um, such as Hinduism, New Age religions, everything. Since everything is God, you are God. And they say that God is inside the universe, so therefore you could control it. And there are certain aspects with people who follow just the Kabbalah within Judaism, the certain people who say that, what do you call it, God is part of the universe and the, and the master God, and you can control him and um, bring him down to earth. Yeah, and many of them don't believe in this God. They believe he's just a powerful part of this. So this is within the Kabbalah. Many rabbis can tell you about this. I know that there's been some some um, people out there who are trying to defend the Kabbalah system. Yes, there is good things in the Kabbalah, good things in humanism. Humanism, care for your family, care for the people in your society. But it doesn't mean care for the other societies as well. That's why we have borders. Yes. Um, here, Gene Wilder was a humanist, um, many of these um, actors, actresses, and um, God is within you, therefore you are God. And he, he turned around and says, I'm Jewish, I'm Buddhist, I'm an atheist. Yeah, but um, uh, um, Orthodox Judaism, yeah, a large part of it doesn't accept this, and Orthodox Islam, a large part of it does not accept this whatsoever. So when he's declaring I'm Jewish, he's actually, you know, this is just uh, just blatant lies. Yeah, there are many rabbis who, who would um, walk in the opposite way. Yes, who won't even look at him. Yes, um, the thing is, so secular humanism here again teaches that you are God. Yes, and um, it teaches children to make moral decisions on what is good for them based on what they think. Now, who said uh, that um, we know what is right for the rest of the world? That's why now there is Reformed Judaism, um, Evangelical Christianity and Quranist Islam, whereby many people are making decisions by themselves. Yes, it is uh, another type of humanism that's developing, um, that's developing. And we've seen that um, Reformed Judaism, um, um, many rabbis have rejected it because it's actually um, opposite to what Judaism is. And um, um, evangelical Christianity is actually, um, well, it's uh, what difference is it from Catholicism? It's um, where men have decided things. Yes. And the thing is, um, the thing is, if they claim that the scripture is from God, why don't they follow the scripture? Oh, no, they decide their own thing saying, hey, this is old. We don't need to eat pork anymore. Oh, we've decided this. Yes. So now there is um, 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 the humanist Quranists. Many of them are saying we can translate anything how we want to. I think this word means this in the Quran or Islam means this, that, everything. It's just the new age, new age thinking. Yes, a lot of it is planned. Well, anyway, Pico de la Mirandola, back, back to him. Yes, so that um, people can see it. Um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, 
um, uh, they claimed that they found the humanistic views of ancient Greece. No, they invented it. Yes, whereby they're just saying God is a human. God took a human figure. This is what what they mm -hmm. what they teach you in ancient Greek philosophy. Yes, and um, uh, let me just um, show you some of his quotes so that people can be clear. These humanists and the and the followers of um um what do you call it um Farnese um during the Renaissance, Ficino declared, "Wake yourself up! You are God. You are God who's become human." So this is actually the Bible. People don't seem to understand this. Yes. And they actually, they put this in the Bible. Yes. Um, there is no evidence that these words were originally there. Yes. And um, who was, who was Ficino? He was the, one of the leaders of the, of the um, Florentine Academy in Florence. Yes. And um, he was teaching um, in the Florentine Academy. Who do we have in the Pl Platonic Academy? We have the Medici family and everybody else. Yes. And um, um, Firenze, Florence, Firenze, Firan, it's the same name. They even named the city after it. Yes, uh, as you can see. And, and the Florentine Academy or the Academy of, of Firen, yes, Fiorentina, yes, Fior, Fior, Fiorentina. And they claim it was found in the 15th century. Yes, in Florence, in Firenze, Firenze, it's named after all the same thing, using the same word. I'll get back to Maurice Bucail, but if we don't understand this, then we won't understand what is Maurice Bucail and who he is, and the so-called science, the scientific facts that they claim are in Islam, in the Quran. Yeah. Um, so now we have Ficinos. He was the most in influential humanists of the Italian Renaissance in the 15th, 16th century. And he revived, they called it Neopolola, Neopola, Napola, Tonism. The Tonism has been added on. He revived, what is this? Nabola or Napola or Napoli on, plural on, Napola? What has this got to do with Napoleon? So very soon people will be able to make the connection of um, the invented character of Napoleon after they understand um, the Renaissance. So now um, Ficino, not only was he um, the leader of the, one of the leaders of the, the um, Fiorentine Academy, Florentine Academy, yes, and one of the most influential people, he was a Catholic priest. He was working for, for your dad, yeah? You know, he, you know whatever daddy says um, goes around the Pope. Yes. So he was working for the Pope. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't make sense because the Pope is supposed to believe in God. And these people are saying you are God. So what the hell is going on here? Yes. So the Florentine Academy. Yes. It was the so-called philosophers and all these people, whoever wrote all these works of art and, and um, all these manuscripts and everything, they've given them fake names. So um, when people study it, um, it'll be, it, it it, it, it'll be a lot easier to understand if we know their backgrounds and what they stood for. So now Ficino was what you call it, and and Pope Paul the Third, yeah, Pope Baal, yes, who was from the who was known as Firan or Firenze family, yes. They were devout followers of astrology, and they studied in the circles of Fig um, Ficino during his during his youth. And many people don't seem to understand. What is this astrology? Yes, many people think astrology according to today because only in the last 100 years they've updated astrology. Yeah, this is in my books. Yeah, they've updated astrology, but what many people don't know is that the astrology, original astrology, was what you call it based on the number 19. Yes, based on the number 19. You've got to read my books for more information about this. This is from one of my books. Um, in, in astrology at that time, they used to say the seven classical planets. Yes, but what are these several cla seven classical planets? It's the five planets that you can see with your eyes and the sun and the moon. That makes seven. And then they said there's 12 zodiac signs. That makes a total of 19. Do you see? Yes. Yes. 
Yes. So this is the astrology that they believed in. And is the it's the one this is the real astrology. Now the thing is what what people are studying online saying, hey, I figured out astrology, uh, or, or, as in the heavens above and on the earth below. Half these are the planets that they said we've discovered since then. Yeah, we're not even sure if they're planets, and um, you can't even see them through your naked eye. Yes, so those are the 19 heavenly bodies. Yes, so now let's move on and um the next the next page so now the medici family yes and um what do you call it the medici family um what do you call it they were um they were all together basically yes and they built the new rome yes rome didn't even exist we couldn't even find it there it was a village of ten thousand people a village yeah um, um it's same like saying um what they're telling us in history Yes, is um. Let me just 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 show you, show you uh, a village in England. And um, the thing is, many people seem to imagine that um Rome, were ancient Rome existed. Now the problem we have with this so-called ancient Rome throughout Europe, we've got these villages, yeah, of um you know, um ten thousand people. Now Rome looks like this, pro probably a bit bigger. Yes, with its surroundings and everything in the 15th century. Yes, you know, just 10,000 people, including the people who were working in the farms and the surrounding areas. Just a village of 10,000 people. So there's nothing there. Can you imagine right now? I can turn around and say to you that this village, yeah, in fact, I'm going to make the picture bigger, yeah, then um, uh, because um, there's going to be the, um, the people who are um, skeptics and um, who are going to try to say things. Um, um, who are going to try to have their imaginations yeah, because many people seem to have their imaginations and um, they don't seem to look at the reality now here is a village yeah there's both sides of the village across the other side on the farms and everything here is a village in England yeah including including um, the farms and everything 10,000 people I can turn around and say to you that in this field and in this surrounding region yeah one one thousand years ago in this area there was the city of atlantis with a million people i can say that to you is anyone going to believe me get the hell out of here no one's going to believe you but so why do people believe that ancient rome existed in that location there is no evidence of it that's why it was called new rome they invented this rome yes um, the evidence shows that um, uh, um, um, there was a Rome in Egypt, um, Alexandria, and um, another Rome in um, Istanbul, um, Constantinople was known as Rome. Well, anyway, so this Farnese family, so now that they base themselves in this Rome, and uh, um, they declared that this is the new Rome, yes? And um, what do you call it, yes? Um, the thing is they're connected, they all hung around together, they were buddies, pals, they didn't go to just school together, they opened these schools, they're not real schools, it's the same like you and me, Andreas and a few others, we're hanging around somewhere, we're drinking, we're having a laugh saying, hey, let's write this, guys, <laughs> we'll tell them in this village was ancient Atlantis, we'll build a few things here, there, everywhere, and we're planning it, that's what they're doing. Yes, mm -hmm. Ficino, Pico, um, Pico della uh, Mirandella, all of them, the Medici family, they were just buddies, they were military generals. Yes, so um, the thing is, um, um, just to make it clear, who was Ficino? Yes, Ficino, yes, here, one of the most influential humanist scholars. Yeah, yeah, so now, um, now the thing is the definition of humanism. Yes, um, think of yourselves as humanists. Um, progressive philosophy in life um, without any supernatural beliefs or a God or anything. Basically, you are God. You are the, the only person that matters. Yes. And the thing mm -hmm. is that um, every single humanist has different opinions. Therefore, there's going to be conflict. Yeah. And if you've got 7 billion people on the planet or um, uh, the flat plane, if some people want to say, then then we're, uh, we're just going to have conflict. Yeah, there would be yes? no common moral yeah underpinning so, yeah. so yeah so now this is very well known many people have put these things online everywhere these so-called families of the renaissance the medici the farnese all of them that um the thing is but because they falsified the history we cannot verify uh, um these families because they mysteriously disappeared 
yes, in the 18th century. So now let's go through. This is going to be the biggest shock. Shock. So now um, this Pope, who's the Farnese, Pope Paul uh, III and all his friends, Leo, the rest of them, yeah. Um, um, let's have a look what they, this is from the, from the Catholic, um, Catholic.net, their website. And um, what do these popes used to say? But since we hold upon this earth, the place of God Almighty, they hold the position of God Al yes. Almighty. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. But it, it's not as simple as that, my dear sir. Oh, no, it's not enough. Yes, this is what they're pu publishing online these days and in their magazines because they don't want you to know the true history of what happened. Yes, and the true history of humanism. Yes, so now let's have a look at this. We are going to go through documents. 1511 um, from a document in Basel in Switzerland. Yes, um, you found it. Yes, now mm -hmm. because they falsified the dates, there's no evidence this is from the 16th century. Yeah, it's probably even from the 18th century or the 17th because we, I can't seem to find the 19th century um, or, or, or up to 60, 70 years. The duplicates of Napoleon, this is in my book, Napoleon didn't exist. They've, totally fabricated the history have you read that book now yes yeah i have the original one i just don't have to get to the recent one to the updated version. oh the original ones deleted um because they've been updated but anyway let's go through what these documents say there's many documents not just one or two now read through this yeah in that document that i've just sent you from the 16th century um um how how did the um um, um, the the people who were carrying out the, the New World Order and the conquest of um, the Crusades and the Inquisi Inquisitions, they what was the name of, of um, the Pope? Our Lord God. His title was actually Our Lord God. Our Lord God, the Pope, the establisher of said decreto and of this could not decree as he did decree should be, etc. But his title was God. That's God, guys. Wait a minute. So during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, yes, um, the Pope was actually called God. They're lying and saying um, we used to just call him Father or Pater or Peter. Yeah, here is God from the Renaissance. Isn't that this what Pharaoh declared? So, so the thing is, we're finding the same history. The Farnese, yeah, they were God. So, so um, let's see, let's see what God used to do when, when he used to walk around Rome. Yes, in case some people are going to say the Latin um, is not clear. Yes, I, I prepared this and I did it myself. I uh, put it into Google Translate. Crede autem dominum diom nostrum papam. But to believe that the Lord our God, the Pope, they're, they're just talking about him. Let me just send more documents. It's not enough. It's flimsy. It's not enough, man. You know, you haven't got enough evidence, David. Okay, yes. So here's a document from Lyon en France, France, 16th century. Maybe it's even 17th, 18th century. Let's have a look at this here. Now enlarged, and um, here it is at the bottom. And we can see, once again, what does it say? Here is another document. At the bottom, what does it say, Raphael? I'm checking. So... But to believe that our Lord God, the Pope, we, we already had that one. Yeah, yeah, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah this um, is one, the one you translated before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a no, this is another document. It's in many documents. Mm. In many documents, they all called him. This is our Lord, our God. It's like um, it, when we talk about our prime minister, our president. No, no, no. They are talking about God. Uh, um, Raphael, when's the last time you went to God's city in the Vatican? Yeah. Have you ever prayed to... um? Um, this God recently, uh, or do you I know think, anybody? Who... I think I could even say I actually never have, luckily, but yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> I was not raised Catholic, I so I, yeah. you know, if I, have, if I have time this year, I'll, I'll see maybe we can go and visit this God. Yes, well, there's more documents. Um, so here is another document from the Renaissance. Um, this is from the Constitution, um, 20 Joannis Pape. Um, yes. Um, from the 16th century in Rome. And um, let's go through some of the pages here. That's the front cover. Yes, the falsified the dates and the falsified the history. Yes, there you go. I've sent you the page. And then um, let me just send you um, an enlargement of this page. There's many documents. Yeah, you can open them up. And um, this is once again, yeah. Um, so 
it, it, it talks about what's going on. This book goes through some of the issues at the time. And then what does it say at the bottom? Again, but to believe that our Lord God, the Pope, so on yes. and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, God must be lucky. You know, this Pope, he had so many followers. <laughs> yes. Um, so le let's go through many documents. I can't believe nobody's even talking about this, um, you know, about God, um, you know, sitting in Rome. Um, you know, God, when, when God's dead, they've got a replacement God, you know, things like this. So now um, this is Liber Sixtus. Um, yes, um, I think it's from the Catholic canon law in the 16th century. And um, yeah, I've had, um, I've sent you this, um, and this goes through. Therefore, of the one and only church, there is one body and one head, not two heads like a monster. That is Christ and the vicar of Christ, Peter, the successor of Peter. Therefore, whoever resists this power ordained by God, resists the ordinance of God. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So what what they're showing here is that they've got um multiple things of one time that um this is um now this document that i've just sent you is the canon law or the canon yes canon in um arabic yes and um canon in english now the thing is this is what they showed the people but why are they calling um um why do they call daddy or pope god amongst themselves but um, to the people, they just say he's the vicar of Christ or the father or whatever. Yes. So now let's go even further to actually remind ourselves. I've done this before, but I'll send it again because there's all the septics. I love daddy, papa, father, dad, daddy, baba, papa, babi. It's the same word. Yes. <clears throat> it's the same word. Like um, here it is. Um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, the meanings of the word pope in old English, papa, baba. You've seen it, yes, yeah. from from um, the language dictionary. So um, the thing is, now the strange thing is, when we look at the 16th century, when all these wars are happening in Europe and um, um, the Crusades and the Inquisitions and burning people alive and everything, yes, um, um, in the 16th century, the Pope's names are all fake. No point in even going through it, yeah? Um, the thing is, they've authorized their people to conquer the Saracens and the Pagans. And the Saracens are the sons of Sarah. Yes, Israel and Sarah were known as the Muslims. Um, yes, mm -hmm. enslave them. Yes, take over the lands and um, everything. And the thing is, why were they invading Europe? Now, now the thing is, many people will say humanism. Yes, it is well known that what they teach you in school, humanism sounds beautiful. And um, when they teach you about the truth in school, they say humanism teaches people to tell the truth to have good character and to seek the truth and to investigate the truth and to use science to understand the truth it's a beautiful principle when it comes to the truth now this is what they say but is it the same principle for the people in power now once people read my books they will notice the lies in history so now let's go to machiavelli the don yeah niccolo machiavelli yes principe from italy in the 16th century Yes, yeah, so now he wrote a book called The Prince. Now, many people won't understand this thing um, because they've probably modified it. Um, he's probably even given a fake name, um, Machiavelli. Yeah, Macha comes from the name Maha, Mahamed. Yes. So um, the thing is, um, um, uh, uh, the name seems like it's a fabricated, invented name. But anyway, let's go through the politics of Machiavelli then we can understand what was really going on and what is going on in the world today. Machiavelli, yeah, and his ideas was the founding of the science of politics for modern Europe and the world. So now in the last video, we spoke about how they were training people all over the world in Africa, you know, to set up a new world order, a new system so that, so that um, they set up the elite. So now any, anybody who understands Machiavelli, Yes, um, the thing is Machiavelli was one of them. Yes, um, um, working together with the Farnese and everything else, they will understand that the politics and the lies that is happening in Europe and around the world. Yes, Machiavelli. So now let's um, establish um, a few more things about Machiavelli. Yes, now about Machiavelli, um, what do you call it? Niccolo Valori. Now Valori was a Fiorentine um, politician. And his teacher was Ficino. 
Yes. And he was he was one of the best friends of Machiavelli. Yes. Now, these people, are, it's not politicians like today. It seemed like, yo, come here or die. I told you to kiss my feet right now. This is what politics was in them days. Chop his head off. You understand? Walking around with swords, it, swords. it was a dangerous mm -hmm. time. Yes. You know, um, things like this. So so the thing is, um, um, as we saw, Ficino was a humanist and they're working for Farnese or Firan or Pharaoh. Yes. And Machiavelli is part of the same gang. We can see this. So now Machiavelli wrote the book known as The Prince. This is his political treatise. And once we understand what is the politics of global global society, global politics today that it's influenced every politician and this is what is the real politics today so machiavelli what does he what does he teach you for the the politician so if i'm going to become a real politician in the world now read through this i'll read it to you machiavelli teaches that the prince basically the politician has no true moral obligations to the people yes and, and what he was teaching is that moral corruption will produce stability and security for the people in power. Yes, therefore, the, um, the, the politicians and the people in power, like actors and the big people who are rich and wealthy, yes, what do you call it? Yes, um, um, it's better for them to have vices or evil or um, bad moral character than to possess virtues. Then he teaches how not to be virtu virtuous, how not to be a good person. This is politics to teach you what to do. That's why we hear political scandals, this, that, everything. Yes. And um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, um, so he's teaching that um, basically you should be a liar. You should not be generous. You should not be honest and um, things like that. Or otherwise, um, the politician will fall. Moses was the opposite. Uh, um, Moshe, or the prophet Moses, and um, um, Christ, Jesus Christ, and um, this prophet Muhammad, and um, all the rest of them, they were the opposite. Now, what they believed in, you should speak the truth at all costs, regardless of anything, mm -hmm. and that um, morality came first. Now, they're teaching, they're teaching, you should lie to the people, lie to the public. Yes, you should um, show bad moral character, and you should encourage this. Can you believe this? This is the basis of modern polit political thought in Europe and the world, in America, in Canada, Australia, you name it. What is that teaching you now? What does that tell you about the New World Order, Raphael? Well, at least it shows their modus operandi. Well, at least it tells me that I don't expect to be told the truth by them, I guess. <laughs> yes, they're going to be telling nothing but lies and they're going to be encouraging things what are seen as morally wrong. So now the, the, um, the prince that Machiavelli wrote is what do you call it? Yes, um, what do you call it? It is the main humanist uh, uh, concept for political thought. Yes, and um, Machiavelli and um, the prince, um, basically um, it shows how the historian, the politician, the diplomat, the philosopher, the humanist and the writers should, should um, behave and how they should write how they should de behave diplomatically without morals. That's why we will see when some of these actors and actresses speak, they speak with a big mouth. They, uh, politicians do. Yeah, they speak and they scream and they try to show that they're right. And they, even when they're wrong, they'll shout, they'll behave like whatever. Mm -hmm. we, we've seen it. Yeah, it's just a, a publicity stunt and um, and they'll pretend that they've made mistakes and then they'll say, I'm sorry, things like this, when really they've got no morality whatsoever. And the thing is, they're Nowadays, doing this. Nowadays, they don't even say sorry anymore, actually. <laughs> oh, they do when it's too late, you know, like um, um, the people with dark, dark hair and dark skin in Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, they injected them so that um, it would totally be you know, um, a very white society pretending that in families they didn't have people with dark hair. So they apologized, um, you know, 50 or 100 years later after they killed everybody. <laughs> that's a bit uh, that's a bit mm. stupid. Yeah. You know, well, anyway, uh, let, let's get to this. So now Machiavelli. Now, this is the simple thing. He advises politicians to become the great liar and the great deceiver. And he he knows he's right. Men are easy to deceive. When I just look at the pathetic comments, you know, in the videos, like somebody's turning around saying, hey, oh, nine euros is ridiculous. 
Yeah, I, I remember I told you to charge two euros and then I, I put it up to nine because there was an earthquake in Morocco. That was the only reason at the time. I turned around and thought, hey, maybe give some money here and there. But, um, you know, some of these dogs or monkeys, they're trying to say, hey, it's a business. And then they're saying information should be free. Everything I'm showing is on the Internet. Go and look for it yourself. Why are you following me? Why do you want to know? That, um, why do you want everything easy just because um, I've organized it? Yeah. Go, uh, go and do, uh, go and do your own research. Yeah, it's all there. And then you're trying to say, oh, he's charging. Yeah, I'm charging because this is my work, my opinion. You've come here to listen to what I have found, not uh, not what is not freely available. It's all free. It's on online. Go and look for it yourself. Yeah, get lost. Yes. Well, anyway, let's get back to um, Machiavelli. So he's telling them, politicians, you've got to be a great liar, a deceiver. Yes, or otherwise, um, you're not going to be able to rule people. Yeah, you got to lie. You got to do, you know, um, what do you call it, inside jobs like 9/11 and all these other things. Yes, and um, not only that, but um, politicians, um, you know, so that you establish your rule of law and everything. Anybody who gets in the way, you you've got the, it's necessary to lie, and it's acceptable. Use torture, murder, rape. This is what these colonial empires did. So this is the type of message that um, Machiavelli was teaching. Yes, it is not only acceptable, but necessary to lie, necessary to use torture. Yes, to build the new world order. And um, that's what they did. Yeah, you know, burning people alive, inquisitions. And so once again, let me just um, remind people or otherwise they'll think I'm making this up. Machiavelli's document, he's known as the father of modern political philosophy and political science. This is um, the basis of how we have um, the philosophy of our political systems and the science of how the nation states are run. That, that, um, that's how we're being governed. Yeah, it's yeah? a match for sure, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, what do you call it? And um, so these uh, Renaissance map makers and everything, they forged a lot of maps. Yeah. And what they did was um, how to divide parts of the world to build their new world order. Yes. And um, um, how they tried to divide them into so-called alleged different races, different colors, different languages. They invented everything. They thought if they don't have different languages, we'll make it. If they don't have a different religion, we'll invent it. If they don't have any fights between themselves, we'll um, uh, make fights like for example um what do you call it the Irgun and the Haganah were blamed um during the second world war for attacking arabs in um haifa yes but um, um that looks like it turns out to be um the Br the british um, most probably did that on purpose yes just to create a conflict so that so that um jews and muslims couldn't can't live together over there yes a lot of them were in inside jobs so now the new world order yes that they, they they're using a book known as the new testament yes um this is this is something something that they're doing yes and um uh, the first time um um uh, that we know of according to official history is only in the 16th century where we can find these um greek originals that were um, published or printed yeah, but even those dates are probably fake. So that that is what what they are using now. The Renaissance, in case people forgot, yes, it just meant the rebirth. Rebirth of what? Of whom? Yeah, new era. And um, the thing is, what they exactly say is the Renaissance was a period of development when ancient classical ideas were revived and reinvented. Reinvented from what? Mm -hmm. Revived from where? They've all been missing for a thousand years. So as we can see, everything is just a fraud. So now the thing is, what did they do with this New Testament and um, for the New World Order? What they did is many people don't seem to realize this. Yes, the Pope wasn't that wasn't powerful enough because the world's uh, um, uh, uh, too big. So then they thought, let's make the world smaller. Yes. So what they did was they made agreements with third parties to divide the world between them um, in the 15th century, 16th century. And this is where we have the colonial empires. Yes. And the Vatican was at the chair of these things. Now, somebody will turn on and say, um, yeah, um, where where does this fit in with the Vatican? Um, I'll get there in a second. Yeah. So now the thing well, is, it's called let's humanitarian have... efforts, no? 
<laughs> oh yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with God. Well, anyway, um, let's have a look at humanist. Um, this is this is from um, um, etymology. Yeah, it comes from the Latin human. It do, uh, there is no word as humanist. Yeah, this is just invented from from Greek and um, adding on ist and all these words and modern languages. Yeah, it basically means um, the concept of human or haman. Yes. So the policy of Firan or Farnes family or Faran family, yes, was human. Human is their policy. Now, mysteriously, it turned around and says that um, in the Quran, it turned around and says that Firan or Pharaoh, yes, was the leader and that um, uh, um, his minister was called um, Haman. Yes. And um, in ancient Egypt, we find, find the same thing, Pharaoh or Pharaon in um, French or Francais. And then we have um, Haman or Haman, Haman Ra or Amen Ra. Yes. Um, the thing is, and um, it, it, it's opposed to, to what is known as, as divine. Yes. So, so we, we can see this. And um, the thing is, um, they've tried to give it invented meanings. They've added on extra whatever, just to one word. But basically, um, they're saying that a human, um, what do you call it? Yes, you will notice that in Old French, it was Aman without the H sometimes. So they couldn't make their mind up. And um, it basically means, you know, philanthropic, you know, Bill Gates is a philanthropist. Yes. They're kind, gentle and polite. Oh, yeah, they'll pay for your medication, but they won't pay for food if you're starving and dying. Yes. So um, um, the thing is, um, 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 we can see what um, humanism is, um, what it's all about. Yeah. So I mentioned um, um, Napoleon. Um, didn't exist, so how could I quote him? So now let's have a look at Charlemagne. Yes, so now many historians have noticed that we can't even find that Charlemagne existed. It's basically a myth. Yes, it sounds uh, like a joke. We cannot find proper evidence of his uh, of his existence. Yeah, it, lo it looks like um, they invented his character during and after the Renaissance. Yes, this is well known. Yes, so how can I write about and quote Charlemagne if he didn't exist? Yes, and um, um, uh, m many recentists and um, many um, people um, who are doing Fomenko's timeline and everything, they've, they found that Salimania basically didn't exist. But he's based on other existing characters and they've added on imaginary characters. So if I quote Napoleon said this, or if I quote Salimania said this, or Solomon said this, it's because they've mixed characters, they've invented things, and I'm just quoting what's in the history. It's not something that I'm inventing myself or saying, I am saying that these people actually said this. Yeah, um, it's because I'm trying to show where the lies in history are. Yes, so like Fomenko, somebody is going to turn and say, Fomenko identifies, for example, one example of the uh, of the Holy Roman Emperor, um, uh, Charles V, Sal, Charles V, Carlo V, uh, Salimania. But then at the same time, Salimania is um, Solomon, King Solomon. Yes, from the Ottoman Empire. At the same time, Fomenko um, points out and says that, um, what do you call it, there's elements of, of Joshua in Salimania. Yes, and um, it, um, it's linked to Solomon, Salimania and many other things. So what they did was they invented many characters, mixed them together. So therefore, um, same like Napoleon didn't exist, Salimania didn't exist. They're based on other characters and they've mixed them together. Same like we can't even find the existence of the Farhanese family. So same like I mentioned and Andronicus before, it's another fake character, Andronicus. When people, people say that Fomenko says Andronicus was Jesus Christ. No, he's saying, what do you call it, at the bottom paragraph, they fused together with elements borrowed from the biographies of other historical actual people and invented biographies. Yes, uh, have you read it? Can You can see it. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what he shows. Now, anybody who doesn't understand this science, like one person commented and said, oh, Fomenko said that um, um, Ali was this person, Imam Ali in Islam. No, he's showing what they did was they um, copied people, invented people, this and that, and they've totally messed everything up. Yeah, and um, uh, history is, um, you know, like Gleb Nosovsky, another professor has actually said, they're even inventing history right now that um, they tried to do it um, after the collapse of the Soviet Union. And here um, we have, um, you know, this is from a research 
that um, you know, in the Baltics and in um, Eastern Europe, what they did is in the last few decades, they were borrowing and mixing historical facts from different periods, yeah, have been prominent. Everybody knows this, um, the fake history of Poland, Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, all these histories matter. So when you have a look at it, you will see that, um, you know, they were just um, making things up for social connections um, to the past and the present to give political meanings, this and that, and, um, you know, just um, create fake histories. So that's what they did. Um, it's still going on today. Yes. And um, what do you call it? Yes. And this is one of the best things, um, best descriptions of Fomenko's work. I'll let you read that out. It's the middle paragraph. What did Renaissance scholars do, Raphael? That is, Renaissance scholars would simply invent ancient history based on contemporary people and events in order to create a phantom history. Yes. So what they did is that Pharaoh, Ferran, yes, lived sometime during the Middle Ages, and then they reinvented him several times. That again in the 16th century that these pharaohs even there in the 14th century even there in the 12th century and everything so they just repeated these things under different guises and different names yes so and then imaginary characters <laughs> shall we understand you i i um i i really respect the new world order for their lies not uh, um uh, when i say i respect them for their lies i mean i respect it that it's such a big joke because I can see through it and I find it so funny mm. seeing these imaginary characters. I don't respect them, that they've deceived the people. I mean, the lies, it should be just, um, you know, they should write down that it's fake history. They should be honest. So now when we look through the Vatican and the Farnese family and everything else, here is a list on Fomenko prepared this. On the left hand side is um, four centuries of, of the popes. On the right hand side is another four centuries. And they just copied it and they just extended the popes and everything, you know, for a thousand years, trying to show that they existed before then in Rome. But there's no evidence of this whatsoever. So now back to Machiavelli. Before we go on to Maurice Bucal, we can't understand him without um, this humanism. Yes. So Machiavelli um, um, worked, worked with the pope. Yes, as you can see, yes, um, following the death of Pope Adrian, Cardinal Pope Clement and Machiavelli works with um, on an official history of Florence. Basically, they invented it. You see? Yes, mm -hmm. the Pope and the Machiavelli and um, their other boys, they wrote other students, they wrote down the manuscripts and everything. And at the same time, yes, um, what do you call it? The Pope formed a Holy League, yes, when you go further down, yeah, against the Holy Roman Empire. They're still fighting the Holy Roman Empire, Charles V. Yes, Charles V is the same person as Solomon. As Solomon. Yes, and um, what do you call it? Machiavelli, what, what, uh, as you can see, went with the army. He was a soldier. So the thing is, they've, they've actually invented the history of the prince and wrote it down as some books. That, um, their people did this. The truth is they were military generals. They wrote these books. They wrote everything. There's no evidence that a Machiavelli existed. There were just a bunch of, um, you know, drug dealers driving around in their cars, bullying people, and they had a lot of cash. And then um, um, they bullied all the, um, you know, the soft people who could study and write and said, get this done or you die. Yes. Do my assignment, dude. <laughs> Write it down. Yes. Um, they were what, going around with their militaries. You can see. Yes. Yes. So, so what they've done there is same like Charlemagne and the other Holy Roman emperors, the descendants were fighting the Pope. Once again, we've got Charles V the ha um, before the Habsburgs took over and um, the Holy Roman Empire in the 16th century. They're still fighting the Crusades against the Pope. What the hell is going on here? Do you see? And um, um, these people were called the Mohammedan Huns. Yes, Huns or Han, yes, is also known as, in Asia they pronounce it Han or Han or, or Khan or Kahan or Cohen. Yes, it's the same name, call it Jewish or call it um, um, Arabic or call it Hebrew or call it Germanic or call it Hungarian Han. Yes, or call it Bulgarian. Yes, many people say it's the great Bulgarian history. It's the same history. Call it Bulgar. The Bulgars will say um, the, um, the Slavs stole it from us. They're going to say the Huns stole it. They're going to say the um, Turks stole it, the Arabs stole it. It's the same global history. Yes, many people have written about it and called it the great history of the Bulgars. It's the same history. Yes, it's a global history, the same old global history. Call it um, 
um, call it um, Tataria or whatever. But now this is very important when we get back to Machiavelli, because in the New World Order, in the 15th, 16th century, they make all these contracts with other princes. The Vatican does them. Why would they do this? Because no, what, what Ma Machiavelli says about the New World Order, he said the Pope is weak. He rules for five or ten years, um, um, the average Pope, and he says they're not going to achieve anything. So therefore, that is why the Vatican made um, deals with other organizations and other, other um, drug dealers at the time and other military mercenaries and everything so that they can take over the world. You see, that's why we have the East India Company and many other people who are getting involved. Yes, so they just made a treaty with many people. Let's divide the world between us. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. So now that we've understood more, we've understood more about this. Let's go back to Maurice Bukail. Yes, so Maurice Bukail, obviously, if nobody's read my books, they won't see the, the suspicious thing immediately that we don't know when he was really born. In the 1920s, no proper records, nothing. We don't even know. France went through chaos all the way through until we got to the 50s and 60s. They say he was born on the 19th of July. So now um, he's born on the 19th of July. And this Maurice Bukail is so famous throughout the Islamic world that the, there's... Um, millions of pages of publications by this guy moses the pharaoh in the bible the quran and history blah 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 and um uh, they're they're given out in saudi arabia in turkey in um iran in pakistan in egypt they're given out everywhere um, muslims in england i've seen them they're giving out these books yes they're everywhere i've seen these books myself in in london in a bookshop and the thing is what do you call it even these official muslim clerics Yes, here is, is um, Dr. Zakir Naik. He's showing, um, what do you call it, the Pharaoh and Dr. Maurice Bukail. Yes, Ramesses, yeah, um, that that's the dead body of the Pharaoh. So now what do we see here? This is um, um, a Sabir Ali, Sabir Ali, and he's even promoting this Dr. Maurice Bukail. They're promoting this. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so now um, let's see what we can find about Dr. Maurice Bukail. So what do we find? Because they're claiming the scientific facts in the Quran. This is such a big thing. Yes, because people should know, are they being misled? Are they being lied to? That people are going to come running to this religion that's known as Islam today saying, hey, it's got these scientific facts. Yeah. Oh, the Vedas don't have them. The Bible doesn't have them. Let's see, is any of these true? So now, um, Maurice Bukal is studying the dead body of the Pharaoh. Yes. Now, the dead body of the Pharaoh that they found is in his 90s. Yes. So it's in his 90s. So now um, the thing is, what they say, this is what the Muslims say, not me. Officially, many of these intellectual Muslims, yes, these books are being promoted by Zakir Naik and Sabir Ali. Yes, they're saying that this dead body of Ramses that they found, or Ramses II, is actually Pharaoh. Um, and um, what do you call it? Yes, so, so now this dead body is 80 or 90 years old. But the Pharaoh who, who chased uh, Moses must have been a lot younger. He's on his chariot. He's a warrior. He's a fighter. He's like a crusader. Yes, and he's coming with his horses. And then he gets drowned. He's not some 80, 90-year-old man. So now what mm -hmm. Dr. Maurice Bukail and his team, his team have, have said, yes, from France or Farans, Faran, yes, what they've turned around and said, this body of Ferran or Pharaoh, en français Ferran, yes, they've said that this is the dead body, that Pharaoh survived and he was alive for 20, 30 years. He didn't die. That's what these people are saying, and that's what these Muslims are promoting. So now some Muslims are turning around and saying, hey, David said it. No, I haven't. It's your books. So I'm showing the forgery in this science of Dr. Maurice Bacayle. Yes. So now let's let's have a look. So now the word en français is in French and in the Latin languages. It's the same as Arabic. It's actually Faran. It's not Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh is English. It's Faran. Yes. Um, I've sent you there so that um, people can see Google Translate. Yes. So now what the what Dr. Maris Bukal does, he goes through many s alleged scientific facts in the Quran. And he turns around and says, goes through some words to show that the earth is round. And then many of the Muslims now are reinterpreting many of these words and say, no, the earth is flat. These are based on classical Arabic dictionaries. Um, 
who put these meanings there in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s? I could just put the meanings in these dictionaries tomorrow. Yes. And um, the thing is, um, when Dr. Maurice Bukail put, claimed all the science, he was supported by the Arab governments. Yes. Um, what do you call it? Yes. And it, it, not only was that, uh, was, was he just um, promoted, but he was actually working with the Saudi royal family. He was actually working with them. And um, the thing is, oh, they made millions of dollars from his books. Yes. Um, um, the thing is, so now um, let's see what um, many people have realized about um, um, some things about Dr. Maurice Bukail and what was going on. When he published his books in um, 1976, um, the Quran agrees with mo modern science. Yes. Um, oh. What do you call it? Yes. Um, when he published it, he based it on dictionaries that were being updated in the 60s and 70s. Did they put these meanings of these Arabic words there to match the so-called science? These are serious questions. Oh, can anybody verify it? Oh, no, the Arabs can't speak um, this um, classical Arabic, so we can't even prove it. Yes? So, so, um, so we can't even prove it. That's another long story. Yes, yeah, so I don't want to get diverted. So let's go back onto the so-called what does the Quran allegedly say? These Muslims are now, many of them, are saying that the Quran describes the Big Bang Theory. Oh, really? But actually, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, it turned around and says what they did was they invented a few meanings to a few certain words and said, that this word could mean this as well as this. Multiple meanings, you know, like for every word in a dictionary, there's multiple meanings. Yes, it actually says in the Quran, can't you see that the sky and the earth was joined together until they were separated. So now separated, they've turned around and translated it as clove the masunda, whatever that means. You know, that could mean anything the way you use those words. Uh, and so they're saying that, that could mean an explosion or a big bang. There is no evidence of that whatsoever. Then. They've translated the Quran um, in so, some translators after Doris, uh, Dr. Maurice Bukail, and they're saying that they made that God has made the world egg shaped. But then again, that word has multiple meanings. They just um, invented the meanings. Um, you know, it doesn't say egg shaped because some older translations, when we have a look at it, actually just turn around and says we we extended the earth or spread it out. Now, many people are going to try to say that that means round or flat doesn't mean anything it just says it's spread out and the, the thing is um, um they've inserted in the dictionaries uh, in the last 20 30 years that it also could mean flat as well as round or oh, they wrote the dictionaries oh uh, so somebody's going to turn around and say hey this is the proof it's not proof of anything yeah yeah so so um the thing is um let me just just show the thing is, because there's multiple manuscripts of the Quran, the multiple manuscripts show that this is a forgery. It says we made the earth spread out. Madad um, Naha or Mada Madad Naha Mahdan. And they claim that all of this means flat. Yes, um, some recent Muslim thing, um, um, Quranists and other people, um, Muslim priests are claiming it says this. Yeah, it just says the earth is spread out. It doesn't say round or flat. And many of these dictionaries have only been updated in the last 50 years. Now, this is a problem. If they were there um, 80 years ago or 100 years ago, we could have um, turned around and said, hey, these, um, this so-called science was there before. And not only this, we can't even verify it with the local Arabs. None of them could speak this language anyway. It's been dead for a thousand years. Oh, but it was spoken in Europe and known by um, uh, many Muslims in Europe and even in Russia. Yes. So then they turn around and say it has science and embryology in the Quran too. Now, when we go through the science and the embryo embryology, they turn around and say, hey, um, things like this are um, shown in the Quran. It tur they turn around and say God created man from dust. Or does it mean the elements of the earth? Then they've changed in their dictionary. They've turned around, put, it means a sperm. Then they turn around and say, oh, it doesn't mean sperm. It means blood. The, um, the thing is, because they've added multiple meanings for a single word, it's easy to invent the translation. Yeah. So the thing is, um, um, the thing is that they've actually messed up the translations. We can't see anything science there. It just turned around and says, we created man. In one translation, it says sperm, clot, lump of meat, bones mixed with muscles. They can't seem to make their minds up because they continuously change these dictionaries. You can change the meaning so you can do as you wish. 
Yes, and um, um, the thing is, it is well known, not just in Arabic, in every language. Yes, linguists do this all the time. Yes, um, what do you call it? They keep updating dictionaries. By the way, on average, the average person, we only use about, about three to 5,000 words a month. So why do we have 50,000 words in each language in dictionaries? Because the rest of them are just fake words that have been invented and left there that nobody uses anyway. Yes, so that's why when I turn on and said, and showed that Arabic was the global language and you'll find it in the older languages, especially in Europe, it's only because there's 400 words. That's it, 400 root words. So if the average person is using up to 5,000 words in um, all the villages and all the different dialects, that was the common language. It's not, not me who said it. This is actually official history. Arabic was the global um, 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 language that, that we used. And then who is it that decides yeah, it's the people in power that who decide what's in a dictionary. Yes, and you can open up dictionaries. We seem to believe um, that, what do you call it, dictionaries are amazing. Oh, they're correct. No, they put the meanings there. They keep changing it. Dictionaries are always uh, uh, updated. Who decides? Um, the so-called professors who are being paid to do these yeah. projects. Yeah, yeah. So um, many people don't see this. Um, it, it, it just it just becomes a joke that um the way they've translated the Quran a lot of it yeah that um they're using modern words that there's no evidence for some of these words that they're turning around saying the Quran specifies that the winds are fertilizers yeah uh, uh, and then the winds uh, here's a translation we sent forth the winds that fecundate even I don't know what fecundates means. <laughs> no, sure. I don't know. I must be a dummy. Yeah. So the thing is, they're choosing these things and it's just a joke. Yes. So the thing is, as you can see, all these things, it's just a total joke that they've fabricated these things. And the thing is, yeah, the Quran talks um, um, a lot of normal scientific things that we can see with our eyes. And it's trying to show that um, God exists. Like, for example, this is what the Quran says. Now, um, I'll show you, and it's just a common thing. So the simple things, 90% of the translations are okay. It says, can you not see that God makes the clouds move gently, joins them together? Can you not see the raindrops that come from the sky, um, etc.? And it's saying, who is it, who is it that's doing all these things? Who created the universe? Yeah common simple things now the rest of the things where they're trying to say this is this and that and everything people are going too far and the quranists are now trying to do this oh because they are trying to prove that um what do you call it yes islam is the truth based on the quran but according to what fomenko has shown and what i can i have shown and uh, many other people have shown islam was here before the quran therefore islam is not dependent on the quran Islam was here before the Quran. We can see this from all these coins in Northern Europe. Yeah. So the Quran obviously came after. Yes. And um, the thing is, the prayer system was already here. And now there's these, um, it reminds me of the Reform Judaism movement. Yeah. That they're trying to give new meanings and new things because they're trying to integrate um, yeah, um, the Talmud and the Mishnah and the, to um, the Torah and the Tanakh into modern day society. Sorry. Sorry. Islam was here before the Quran. Yes. If you don't like this Islam, then um, don't make up your own Islam um, uh, like the Reformed Jews did and like um, the Evangelical Christians did. Yes. Even the press system was here before. We can see this clearly through the Orthodox Christianity that's in Eastern Europe. That's basically half of Europe. Yes. And Fomenko even pointed this out. Even the prayer system there is basically identical. Yes. But they've modified it so that they bow down to, to the um, um, icons and the other things. Yes, and uh, many people are, are saying, hey, where did the Muslims get their prayer system from? Yeah, um, yeah um, uh, it must have come from the history books. No, the history books have been falsified. The prayer system was already here. Uh, uh, um, uh, of course, these, um, you know, these reform, reform Judaism will try to say it came from Zoroastrianism because the Jewish prayer um, bang down on the floor and everything is exactly the same as the Muslim one. Yes. So um, the thing is, they're going to turn around and say, ah, um, the Jesuits must have um, forced the Jews to pray like this. Oh, what about these Orthodox Christians? We're talking half of Orthodox Christianity. Have they even investigated this history? Or are they just going to come up with their own opinions? Um, Reform Judaism. 
yeah and um these evangelical christians who are claiming or oh, the orthodox christians invented this prayer system same like the quranists who were saying they um or oh, the muslims um you know invented this prayer system and um from this history this history is a, is a fraud yes all these um, muslim manuscripts of um muslim history it's just a fraud like the rest of the world it doesn't uh, uh, there's no uh, there's no basis for it also for example yes we don't even know where they got this translation from. Look at this to justify the signs. The mountains are stakes. Huh. We don't even know if that's a correct translation. We don't know who's made these things. Yeah, um, um, things like this. And then um, um, the, there is another thing. So as we can see, there is a problem with the dictionaries. So for example, like um, the thing is they've invented these dictionaries. So it turns around and says, we've placed the mountains standing firm so that the ground doesn't shake the mountains are like stakes or something it says this in the quran but then in another place it says the mountains yeah people think they're fixed but then um, they, um, they shall pass away or something or they're passing away like the clouds or something so the thing is um there's uh, mm -hmm. many things that are questionable and now um there's um reform islam which is becoming very big in america yes because there's not many muslims there and even in europe because many people in europe don't know what islam is and they're, and they're just going to be, many of them have actually believed these so-called things in the translations and the alleged scientific facts yeah i can't seem to find any of these facts i just find it a simple book that talks about history talks about the basic science to show that hey god created the world did you create the the system of the clouds the system of the mountains i would and just then, like um, to point out as we know that several forces like to play around with the weather as well this is official by now it also oh, yeah. it raises the question i mean on one hand it would confirm the idea of humanism that humans are god so they say they want to create their own weather however the other question of course would be even if there would not be this direct manipulation how can we exactly know what really creates the weather here? Yeah, yes. So, so the, <laughs> even here the question yeah, so is open, what is yeah, God exactly yeah, or yeah, which that, level are they true. talking about? The weather subject, yes, um, people have to study this a lot more. Yes, we have to study this a lot more and um, it will need um, a totally um, uh, um, different um, discussion for it. But anyway, back to Do Dr. Morris Bukayo. Yes, it was him and the Saudis and the rest of them, um, because at that time in the 60s and 70s, yes, the, um, it became popular that the world science at that time is that the earth is round. So therefore, um, the followers of Morris Bukayo argued that the Arabic word for spread, the word is sp spread out, the haha, actually came from the word uh -huh. around the egg. So it was that movement based on those dictionaries. Now, once again, the flat earth movement is moving forward. So they can't change the dictionary again, you know, because now there's an educated middle class. So what they've added on things is to show that the spread out could also mean flat. In other words, play both sides. You understand? Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, um, just to justify that the signs there. I'm not trying to say that the Quran is a divine book or not a divine book or a scientific book or not a scientific book. I'm showing that many of these scientific facts have been invented because they just invented the meaning. You can do this with the Bible. Many people don't even know it. And we can say, hey, nobody realized that this is what it means. Yes. Um, also, what they tried to do is um, um, they messed up. I'm trying to show that God created the world in seven days or seven periods or whatever. There, um, Bukail and um, all these other people, what they tried to do is match it with the biblical story and many other things. And, um, you know, the Big Bang and everything. And so they were even changing the meaning of um, in translations of many other things. Yes. Like, for example, we also have this problem. Yes, um, many people have pointed this out correctly in answering Islam, that um, in chapter three of the Quran, it turned around and says that um, at least two angels came to the Virgin Mary to announce the birth of Jesus Christ. But in chapter 19, it basically turned around and says that there's a single angel. So now the thing is, this is based on translations based on the manuscripts. Now from the manuscripts, one would assume that it actually says 
plural in one place and singular in another place. But when somebody sees that once people realize that the Quran was for the village people or the people, um, you know, the poor people or the average person, you don't need to be you don't need to be like a university person playing with words to understand things. And it's an oral book and you understand this. Once you understand this and that you see that they're reciting this in the mosques, not people sitting online trying to figure out, hey, what does one word mean based on based on the Egyptian manuscripts or the French manuscript or the Tunisian manuscript, what you will realize, what you will realize is that, um, um, what do you call it? Like um, some of the plurals, like um, um, there is the word Malaika and then there is the word Malaika. Did you notice the difference between the two words I just said? No, not me, no. One of them is plural and one of them is not. Mm. So now when the Europeans wrote down these manuscripts, as I explained in the previous videos, they wrote it plural in some instances and singular in another. That's why in different manuscripts, it's different. So therefore, when, when these Quranists and these reformists and evangelical people go through biblical manuscripts or Quranic manuscripts, what they will notice is that there's these problems because that's what these manuscripts have done. So therefore, um, there is no contradiction. It's just that it sounds in a different way. That's all it is. And, the, and it doesn't sound in a different way. I mean, you, it sounds a little different. So but it's these spelled different, it no, with problem. the diacritics and so on, probably, right? They invented this spelling. It's like mm -hmm. you and me are talking right now. Let's bring somebody from, you know, Japan or China or Korea and say, write down what these guys are saying, even though you don't know how to spell English words. You just know A, B, C, D. Of course, they're going to get it wrong. That's what these people did. Oh, they did this deliberately. Yes. So, so um, let's and have just a look as, at as a sideways joke because I'm know you're familiar with it too. You can even just look at all the loan words usually written in katakana in Japanese and how funny they are spelled oftentimes. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Now you know. Yes, katakana shows the spelling. Yes, shows the spelling of the words. Yeah. It seemed like um, Chinese when we when it's called Romaji or or, mm -hmm. or, or Romanized um, Katakana Romaji. Yes, so you're inventing the spelling yourself. That's all it is. Yes, and there is no official spelling. That's what they did. Computer. With the <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Computer. Computer deska. <laughs> Computer. That, that's a Japanese accent. Yes. Anyway, so now the thing is, it began in the seventies. Yes, the so-called science of the Quran and the scientific facts, because now mysteriously, the Muslims didn't find this science for um, the last hundred years. But now the dictionaries and uh, Maurice Bukhal found them and said, hey, look, this dictionary shows that these words mean this. Nobody knew. Oh, by the way, this language has been lost for a thousand years, classical Arabic. But this is, don't worry, this, these, di these dictionaries have not been updated with fake meanings. So you see what I'm getting at? Yes. Now, yeah. uh, um, you see what I'm get, getting at? So that's um, Maurice Bukail. And another thing about Maurice Bukail, let's have a look at the publication dates of his books. Now, here you go. Um, for example, Moses Efiran en Francais. When was this published? Have a look at yourself. 1995, it says. What date? Oh, on the <laughs> I didn't even look at it. On the 19th. 19th of January. Yes. Here I'll show you again. Yes, Moses and Pharaoh. Yes, it was published on 19th of January because he did two editions. Yes, another edition was done on the 1st of January. I'll send it here because I don't want anyone to say, hey, um, David didn't mention that. So he did two editions, one on the 8th of January and one on the 19th of January. 19 Janvier. Yes, <laughs> you saw it there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so the thing is, um, yes. And um, the thing is, yeah, so I've sent you that. Yeah, you found it? Yeah, yeah and for the 8th of January, let me just send in other bookshops in case um, people can't see it. So he's using, so he used two dates, 8th of, 8th of January and 19 Janvier was the main edition. The main edition was published on the 9th, 19th of January, 1995. Yes, and then, um, 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 the, so now the thing is, what do you call it? Yeah, I don't know who these people are, but these so-called big Muslim preachers, um, you know, like I think he is he English or American. Look at these people promoting Yusuf Estes. 
not sure who he is, but he's supposed to be big time or something, a Muslim priest or preacher. Yes, they're promoting this Dr. Maurice Bukayo. Yeah, Pharaoh survived and he lived on for around 30 years. Ah, yes, yeah, so now according to official history, because I, I mentioned Meren Peter, yes, Meren Peter, the rock of Saints Peter, and Peter or Petra were Dan Gibson and this Sam Jaran's yeah, claims um, um, the, um, the prophet Muhammad came there. Yeah, uh, Meren Peter was the son of Ramesses the second or something. Yeah, can't seem to they can't seem to make their mind up which one was the pharaoh. Yeah, um, so the thing is, um, yeah, because they have a problem with this because Ramesses the second lived on for thirty years. If he did drown, he was still alive for thirty years because he died at ninety. So now many Muslim apologetics try to say that um, it was um, Mary and Peter. But Mary and Peter, um, uh, um, uh, um, what do you call it? I think he died when he was um, 80 years old too. Yes, so it couldn't have been him either. Yes, um, or it could have, I don't know. But the thing is, um, according to official history and these Muslim historians, this Pharaoh survived and he lived on according to Maurice Bukal's team. So now Mary and Peter, let's have a look who is Peter, our father, yes. Don't forget the Pope, um, your God, Pope. Yeah, um, God, let's see, let's see more information about God in ancient Egypt. So, so Peter was God. Yeah, Petah, Peter, you see? Yes, who was Peter? The Egyptian God. Yes, Peter or the Pharaoh Merim Peter, he was God. Yes, <laughs> so let's learn more things about this um, same thing. You know, the rock of Peter and um, the Pope declaring himself God. <clears throat> yes. And um, let's have a look at who this um, um, Egyptian pharaoh is called, Petah or Peter. Yes. Um, what do you call it? Many people will find the sarcophagus of the priest of the god Peter or Petah from ancient Egypt. And um, you'll find it in, um, what do you call it, St. Petersburg. Notice Peter's city, St. Peter's city. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's there in um, the, um, the, the Hermitage Museum. Yeah. The, um, Peter, yes. Yeah, so um, you'll notice the connection. It is the it is the uh, um, the Rome of the North, and many people don't even know. They don't check um, the so-called fake history of ancient Egypt. But when you check, you'll be surprised. These pharaohs are called Peter. Not only are they called Peter, these pharaohs are called Pepes or Popes. <laughs> mm -hmm. You see, these popes, and they built these massive tombs of Peters or the Rock of Peter, the rocks of ancient Egypt. Yes, and um, what do you call it? The high priests of Peter or the rock of Peter in Egypt. Let's have a look. Yes, they used to have high priests during the reigns of Pepe or the popes. Yes, in ancient Egypt. And the, um, Pepe was building all these um, pyramids and all these other things. Many people don't know these things. This is, the, yeah, um, 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 the official history. So Pepe and Peter or the Pope and P and Petar, yes, it's the same thing. Why is it Peter is the rock? Yes, why? Yes, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church or the house of God. Yes, so now let's have a look at the Vatican here, um, St. Peter's Square in, in the Vatican, and let's compare it to St. Petersburg Square in the north. The Inquisition from the north happened from St. Petersburg. In the south, it happened from Rome. Do you see the similarity in the connection? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it's a long story about um, um, the Inquisition in the north. So I'll have to go through it um, next time. So now back back to Fomenko so that um, people can see because many people, I don't want them to mistake Fomenko saying he said this person is this or that. No. So for example, what Fomenko shows is that all of written history is merely copying, altering and repeating a limited set of historical events. Yes. Now you can read the next paragraph under WordPress. Yes. Yes, it says yes. essentially Fomenko believes that all of recorded history has occurred since whatever he says, repeating them over and over again under different names. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So now the thing is, I've shown a similar thing as well. Yes, a similar thing that um, the, they've just invented and repeated the history. So now that um, tackles Maurice Bukayo. Yes. So let's leave it at that, Raphael, that um, we can see the connection between 
pharaohs and the pizzas. And um, just in case um, people don't know the pharaohs, let me show um, the pyramids of, of, of Pepe or the popes. The pyramids of the popes, they're actually officially named and they used the rock rocks of Ptah or Peter to actually build these things. And then we've got Sam Garans and all these people who are trying to promote and um, Petra and all these other things. Yes. So um, the thing is, um, as you can see, um, the thing is what we found is Peter, the Pope, Pepe, all this repeating history, Firan, Ferran, Ferrans, everything. Every, if people have listened to the other videos, then they should know it by now. Uh, uh, by the way, you know, you could call the other video, um, what do you call it? Um, his, um, part one, um, African history is a lie. And you can call this part two, Pharaoh and humanism. Yes, just call it mm -hmm. part two, Pharaoh and humanism. And then we'll close it, uh, close it at that. Yeah, hope it's good enough. Yes, I think it's perfect. Thank you so much, David. Yes. Very yes. excited and, uh, and exciting I'll information as time. always. Thank you, David. Yes. Okay. Have a have a great day. Okay. Bye.